All right, here's a little instruction on new account training. Um, I'm gonna give you all kinds of details, uh, whether you're new to our company or cleaning, uh, there's gonna be some tips in here and some uh, good policies to follow to kind of make it easy on yourself or the person you're sharing an account with. Um, I've got my camera set up on a bucket and I've got two bags in my uh, bucket caddy so that if we have drips or anything, um, we're not leaving um, carpet drips on the floor. And I'm gonna move this cart around with me as I clean and you're gonna get some tips. You can probably see right here, all the way down this hall, there is a drip on the carpet from dragging basically a bag full of trash that probably had a hole in it and some liquids. And so we've double bagged our cart this time and that way we'll have two bags to catch that. Um, the other thing is we're, uh, this account has a janitor's closet and this is where the cart goes. So at night we wanna make sure and put a, a bag in our cart or in our bucket uh, in case somebody throws trash out overnight or if we're sharing this account and uh, somebody else is coming in the next day to clean, they don't have to reline the cart and get it set up for themselves the next day. Um, it's kind of like cheating and um, taking advantage of your team partner by not setting the cart up for them the next day. If it's you and you're cleaning the next day and you don't want to line it that night, that's fine, but um, that's uh, we want to make sure that we're uh, prepping our cart. Okay, uh, this way is the kitchen. Um, it's gonna be a little shaky here, uh, and I'll just kind of stop uh, the cart right here so that you have a view. Um, I'm gonna grab a couple of rags. Uh, we're gonna spray some things down, and I'll talk some details in just a second. Okay, we've got a microfiber rag and a nanofiber rag, which is super smooth and slick and it's for window cleaning, window and glass and chrome and things like that. So um, I always take the Sorry, I think somebody stole the Windex out of my cart. I'll probably find it somewhere in the building later. But for now, I'm going to use this um, cleaner. It's just Dawn and water. Uh, but I'm gonna spray down the counter. Um, and I'm just kind of doing a quick, quick job here for demonstration, but I'm opening up the microwave. And, uh, but you always wanna check the front of these cupboards. Uh, especially below the sink, and then especially below the coffee maker right here. So, uh, you have to get the light to shine on it. You know, if there was a drip or some fingerprints or whatever, you have to kind of get the light to shine on it. The coffee maker needs to be sprayed and wiped every single day. It is spotted and has drips on it every day, and then the side of it even. The sink needs to be sprayed. And I always use a magic sponge on the chrome because it gets those water spots that are actually don't come off with Windex. And so that magic sponge will rub out those water spots and then I will polish it with my microfiber and get the moisture off of it. Sometimes I'll just take that magic sponge, clean up the inside of the sink. On the weekends, we do this account every night, but on the weekends, I'll use some Comet in the sink and get up the coffee stains. So that's a once a week thing. So that left the sink a little bit sudsy, and so now I'm just gonna dry polish it. that. Sometimes that's over here. I always center it. Check the backsplash. Check handles, prints. This is always dirty right here. You can see my rag is actually sticking to it because somebody spilled something. 
your microfiber rag will kind of stick wherever there's. Under here, trash bags and supplies. Sometimes you can dump trash, some, but the kitchen trash always has to be, the trash can has to be relined. There's no trash can liners in the bottom of this trash can. And always there should be trash can liner, several, I put a couple in there. Especially if you share an account with somebody, do not ever leave a trash can without some extra liners in the bottom. There happens to be liners underneath that, in that cabinet, and so that makes it less important for this. But uh, generally, most accounts don't have a big roll of trash can liners sitting right next to it. And if perhaps you got to the end of your shift and you were getting ready to alarm the alarm, arm the alarm, and you realized, oh crap, I forgot to take out the trash. Well, you can just grab the trash out of there and reline it with the liner that's sitting in the bottom, and you're not running all over. Okay, while I'm in here, I'm going to take the mop. That This has a sprayer on it, and I'm going to, if there's anything, uh, any little pieces of food or anything that need to be swept, I'm just going to push them off onto the carpet. This floor is not generally that bad, but you can kind of spot mop the kitchen and push anything off onto the carpet. Okay, I'm gonna roll the carpet. Okay, now we're gonna head and go do offices. I have this little touch-up sweeper and I'll just take it with me. I always wipe down the printers check for any staples or anything. There's a trash here. Don't really need to reline it. You can just stump it. Make sure that the liner is put down in there really well. Close, stop. And that the trash can is put back where it belongs and not just kind of sitting out. Um, if you see anything on the carpet, you can zip it. Head back to the offices. I'm sure this is hard to watch as the cart rolls. Okay, this office, um, the staff member has put their trash by the door. It's empty. There's a chance they were not in. I'm going to spray my rag with Windex and go check her desk. Her trash can is often under the desk, and right now there's a lot of stuff under there. But there's really not a lot to do today in her office. I always go check for fingerprints. And once a month, I'll wipe this down and dust it. Do a little bit more thorough job. And I always check for um, you know, if the chairs have been pushed out and there's anything on the floor, then we'll sweep it. This office actually probably hasn't been used today and was cleaned last night. Okay, the next office we come to, the door is closed and so we're not going to clean it. This office, we need to check it because the door is open. There's nothing in the trash can, and there's no fingerprints on the desk. Actually, there is one piece of paper in the trash can, and I just pulled it out. It's like an envelope. <clears throat> okay. There's not really anything to sweep. Actually, there is. So, you can just turn the sweeper on.
check under desks. On the weekends, the person who cleans over the weekend will get an actual regular vacuum out and vacuum everything. So once a week, it gets a good vacuum. Okay, we're back. Um, this little table here, it actually is worth wiping down. I check it every time because there's often a coffee cup ring or fingerprints or something on it. Sometimes people's kids come in with them because the lobby's not open right now. Okay, there's one more office to clean. And in this office, I'm gonna demonstrate to you how to clean the desk. This is laminate, kind of a wood look desk. It's This, uh, this office is, uh, oh my gosh. Okay, uh, this laminate, it's kind of a wood look. It has a grain to it, even though it's not actual wood. Um, you still have to, like we're gonna get fingerprints off of it. Uh, notice I'm not spraying the table, I'm spraying the rag. And let's say there were people in here today. You're not going to just uh, do this because um, when it dries, when they come in in the morning and the sun comes in, they're going to see exactly the swirl mark. So here's the grain going this way. And so you wipe this way and you're going to make sure that your rag is not too wet. If it's just slightly damp, it'll pick up those fingerprints, but not leave any swirl marks or any moisture marks behind. But if you're sharing the job with somebody and the other person is wiping sideways, you'll know it and you'll end up even in an office that hasn't been used you'll have to come in and clean the desk to make it look right so um, it's making work for somebody else the next day if it's not wiped down correctly move that out of the way getting around behind these computer monitors. Okay. Push. I don't see anything on the floor. I'm pushing the chair back in. There's literally no trash. Nobody was in this office um, since yesterday, but I went ahead and cleaned the desk because there were swirl marks on it and now it looks like a fresh desk. So I don't really even need to run the sweeper in here. Okay, now we're going back out into the lobby and it's gonna get rough, this tile's rough. Okay. Sorry, okay. All right, one more desk. Uh, this desk has started to be used. Um, I don't really need to demonstrate anything else. I'm going to pause the video. Okay, we're back. Um, you notice that I've been carrying the sweeper with me from room to room. Right now, I'm taking care of this area over here in front of this uh, ATM machine. This gets used every single day and there's almost always something to sweep right here. You just have to keep your eyes open. But because we're going through here with our rag, our trash bucket and our sweeper all at once. We'll never come back to this spot. So once we're over here, we're gonna do everything there is to do and we won't have to keep running around the facility over and over again to do each piece of the cleaning. Okay, uh, over here, I'm not gonna uh, run the video while I drag this across the tile, but I'm gonna run the sweeper. Even over here in the lobby, uh, there's just little pieces. And this is where I'm gonna get my glass rag. And I'm gonna use it on that entry door. And if it's got a lot of fingerprints on it, you can just mist your rag and you don't want it any wetter than that. And you're gonna rub out any fingerprints or anything. And um, if you feel like it's just making a smear and you're kind of making a bigger 
problem on the glass, then you're putting too much pressure. You're just gonna buff it. buffing will clean off any haze that's stuck to it. Okay, now we're over here and that is the teller area. So uh, you can see kind of the, the teller area and I always check this. And even if nobody touches it, just the haze in the environment will stick to any type of a swirl or chemicals that might have got left behind. So I always come over and just touch these up. Just barely pushing on them. I'm just kind of buffing stuff out, but this lobby's not open. So um, there are several things on the floor over in the corner. Um, and behind this thing, I'm probably just going to take that little sweeper over there. And then in this, sorry. It's really irritating. Um, in this room, I'm going to grab the trash. There's a liner in the bottom. I'm going to put another one in there. But if I had forgotten the trash in here and happened to remember that before I went away out, just gonna grab that trash can at the bottom. I'm gonna sanitize all the sanitize all the counters, uh, and then you run the little sweeper in here, and I'll be back. Okay, a couple more things. Um, this is obviously a pathway from right here, from that door uh, to here, and the carpet um, that starts right here is often got quite a bit of stuff on it. And if you're sweeping the floor and pushing it off with a dust mop, you need to push it off onto the carpet. You need to sweep really good there. Another high traffic way is again from that same door but over to this office. So um, I'm gonna pack, back this up. You can see I'll walk that trajectory. So from this door coming in and going over to this uh, office area, there's um, often a lot of dirt on the tile. Uh, something needs to be swept or pushed off onto the carpet and sometimes even mopped. Okay, um, next thing is this trash can right here. Uh, needs to be double bagged all the time. Um, wasn't double bagged last night and this is too small. And so, um, yeah, okay. So, that's a small one. In this drawer right here next to it, that's the second one, it's trash bags. So I'm gonna stick one in there and then we're gonna double bag this particular. This trash can has uh, food trash in it every single day. It will always need to be taken out and it will always smell like it needs to be taken out. And because it's often food trash, um, can, spray your hand to make it wet to get the trash can apart. Um, needs to be double bagged.
Okay, uh, down the hallway, there's a whole uh, hallway of offices and all of the doors are closed. We don't go in any of the offices when the doors are closed. Sometimes they'll set their trash can outside and we'll dump that or reline it. But if the door is closed, we don't go in there. And so now we have a bathroom. And in the bathroom, um, hang on this. Okay. Um, there's a, two toilet rolls here. And in this little thing is both toilet paper and the key to the toilet paper, which just pops it down and you put another toilet roll in there. And even though there's two in there, if there's one of them that's empty, replace it. This place goes through toilet paper. There's like seven women who work here. Even during the pandemic, seven women are working here. And I'll, I was here this morning and replaced one of those. So um, they need to be replaced. And you need to, to keep your eye on this. Uh, this paper, when you pull it out, if it's, it has notches in it, that means that it's getting low and it needs to be replaced. So in here, it's just uh, paper is the only thing that's ever in that trash can. I just dump it and instead of relining it. There's a small trash can over here. If there's anything in it, I just dump it. There's not always something in there. Um, I try to uh, wipe this down and um, excuse me, I have lost the white sponge. I think I left it in the kitchen, but I often take a white sponge on this, the magic sponge, it rubs out any water spots very quickly. Um, And this is, there's always splatter right here. Just kind of rubbing out water spots. You don't need to scrub or put a lot of chemical in these sinks. You do need to kind of keep your eye on the drain. And if the drain starts looking gunky, you can take your grout brush and just rub it around in the drain or on the edge. Polish that up. I'm taking my window rag. Just kind of buffing out streaks. Okay, there is soap for that in this little cabinet right there. Um, Midweek, I just sanitize the toilet. Uh, and then on the weekends, I do a thorough cleaning with a bowl mop and bowl cleaner. Sometimes I'll use a rag if I'm not going to be using it again. It's pretty clean. This bathroom is very dusty. And once a month, I have to clean uh, the ceiling vent. Uh, and weekly, I dust the tops of all of this. And daily, I dust the top of that and these, and the top of the toilet holder. Okay, there's a men's room, and we do the same thing in there. I spray down these sinks. We don't always need it, but I always check. And about once a month, I'll spray some acid or some Comet spray in here to get rid of the water spots or any white scaling that starts to build up. All right, you'll notice that that's right outside the bathroom. Um, I'm standing in front of the men's and the women's and I uh, got that far with my sweeper and I did the bathrooms and I'm gonna leave the sweeper there and then I'm coming back all the way down 
sorry, I just turned around. And so I'm continuing on down this hallway and we're back to the janitor's closet and that kitchen. So here's, sorry, the janitor's closet. I didn't mean to make you dizzy. Okay. And so the only thing left to do, and I'm going to shut that door. Okay, so now you can see that hallway uh, where the two bathrooms are. And I have our mop uh, with a, a microfiber head. And this mop has a little hole right here and you can fill it with liquid. And then it has a spray trigger. So it's all set up. And I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna go in each of these bathrooms and I'm gonna spray and mop flat mop each bathroom floor. If there's any loose paper, um, anything that might be on the floor, I'm gonna just sweep it off out into the hallway onto the carpet with them while I'm mopping. So just one step. I just demonstrated in the men's bathroom. If the mop head were to be full of debris, hair, whatever, and it stuck to the bottom of the mop, you probably saw that I actually took the mop and kind of rubbed it on the carpet, which just grabbed whatever was stuck to the bottom of the mop and, and made it stay on the carpet. Now I'm gonna go sweep that up. Off camera, I'll go back and do the women's. Uh, generally needs it more actually, but that tile is very slick and smooth. And if you look at it with the light shining on it, it you can just see footprints and every little drop of anything on those. Even though there's a lot of texture looking pattern to those floors, they still look really bad every single night. So you've got to flat mop them with a um, the damp mop every single night and then just vacuum like right outside that door on the carpet to kind of get anything. Uh, but that's it. Put your dirty rags in the, um, in the dirty rag bag. There we go. Here's the mop sink. This Walmart bag is the dirty rag bag. And the bag over here hanging by the fire escape is clean rags. And um, this, there's a bucket right here full of extra cleaning supplies for doing deeper cleaning on the weekends and monthly, um, several different mop options, and a uh, lemon dust mop. In the winter, if it's uh, raining or sleeting or snow or whatever, and there's salt out front, and there's a lot of that all over that tile out front, you're gonna dust mop all that over, just push it onto the carpet, and you're gonna get the vacuum out. Here, of course, is the regular vacuum, which we use on the weekends to do a thorough vacuum of the floors. So midweek, four nights a week, we're just using the little sweeper and we're going from office to office and touching up the desks, catching trash, sweeping anything, pushing the chairs back in. Um, it's about 30 to 45 minutes of work once you get in here and get going. I think the important thing is to keep your eyes and your brain working, your eyes open and your brain working and looking around for are there drips down the front of the cupboards or is there anything that the next day they would come in and see and it looked like you kind of did a cheap job or whatever. Uh, we want to do a good job every night. Um, so that's uh, how to upkeep on this account. So I'm gonna grab the trash. I'm gonna grab both bags because we're double bagging it. And um, then we're gonna take those out um, and put that out front. I always, uh, I don't know if I can do this without being super irritating with the camera, but I'll, I will remove um, 
the double trash bag, the trash out of this can, and just take it and put it over here on the tile. I'll go turn on the lights, put the cart away, re reload the bag on the cart, and then I will dis or I will arm the facility, get my jacket on, everything together, and then set the alarm and take the trash out with me when I go out so that I'm not making multiple trips out the front door. So that is the system. Make sure you get your lights turned off, your door is closed, take everything with you, um, and that's it. One note about uh, facility um, protocols. Uh, you can see I've got my logo to apparel on. That's uh, essential, that's a must when you're cleaning any of our accounts, you've gotta have that on. Uh, most of our accounts have some type of an alarm system and if for some reason we don't get it turned off properly but there's no audible sound, the police could be case in the joint. This has happened. Um, multiple times where you don't know the alarm's not turned off properly, but the police are out there with their got their hand on their hip and their lights are all turned off and they're just kind of walking around trying to figure out who's in there. And so you just don't want to be in a bank or financial institution when the police are nervous and they've got their hand on their hip. Uh, and the minute they see our logo, bam, you're all good. They're all good. It's all, um, it's all fine, even if you know there's no phone calls that have happened. So, um, gotta have that. The other thing is, you need to have jeans. You've got to have a belt loop. Must. Yoga pants. You can wear them underneath your jeans. Um, everybody wants to wear jogging shorts or yoga pants. I do too. But you've got to have jeans with the belt loop on. Uh, bring them with you if you're at work all day. Uh, and that's not what you're wearing to your day job, bring something with you to change into. I changed into this. I've been out working all day and networking. I did not wear this all day. I brought this with me and I changed. And that's one of the reasons I've given everybody a jacket so that if you don't have your shirt with you for some reason, keep this in your car, put your jacket on, make sure you got jeans. And let's talk about belt loops. Your keys need to be hooked on something that is not going to be taken off. So this great little jacket with pockets is wonderful, but dang, I am hot. Yeah, and now I'm gonna go take the trash out. And guess what? My key is down there on the floor and I left the building to go take out the trash or get my phone out of my car that I forgot or whatever. But you cannot put the keys to a facility in a piece of clothing that you might take off in public. So unless you're gonna take your pants off in public, that's where you need to be keeping your keys. I know that I'm being dramatic, but oh my gosh, 31 years of this. Uh, just the other night, I had to drive 30 miles into town with my spare key uh, to let a girl back into an account that she was locked out of in 20 degree weather late at night. And so I've said this, she knew it. Uh, and oh, this one time she wore yoga pants. <laughs> so uh, I know I'm being uh, a little bit dramatic with that, but I honestly, I cannot say that enough. I don't ever clean without jeans on. And I haven't been locked out of an account since I started doing that. So um, that's keys. Um, if you are locked out, if an alarm goes off, call me, don't text me, don't email me, um, call and then call again and then call again if I don't pick up and keep calling because my phone, if it's even on silent mode for any reason, if it's accidentally on silent mode, you will, it will ring through to me on the fourth time you call. It's set up to do that. So anybody who's in my favorites list, which you are, um, it will not, if it's on silent or do not disturb, it won't ring through until the fourth time you call me. So um, just keep calling if for some reason I'm not picking up. Um, 
in the middle of the night, something happens, you need me, you're sick, you're running to the ER, don't text me. I won't see it, I won't be able to solve that problem, I won't be able to do anything about that, I won't be able to call the client in the morning, um, you have to call and wake me up. That's okay, that's, that's what we do. So, um, I think that's it for alarms, keys, and protocols for um, account communications. All right, thank you.